Hey, you've tuned in to the G Free and Happy Show. Tonight, my guest is Jane with Jane's Healthy Kitchen, and she is going to share her tasty traveling tips for Memorial Day weekend that are G Free, Paleo, and super healthy. Plus, I'm highlighting her book, Paleo Desserts, tonight, so stay tuned. Hello and welcome to, I hear a little bit of feedback. Uh, so welcome to the G Free and Happy Show that happens every Monday night at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. I'm your host, Kathy, and I've been G Free and Happy for four years and counting. Uh, tonight, my guest is Jane. In fact, let me get that up. Jane's, uh, she has Jane's Healthy Kitchen and hello, look at those yummy treats and Yum. Oh, she's got a maple glazed salmon, blueberry pancakes with berrylicious sauce. These will all be, well, maybe not all of these because we don't have that long, but we'll be talking about some wonderful recipes and tips that she has for traveling tonight. And I'm highlighting her cookbook, so, or her dessert book. Uh, but first, episode, what are we on now? 23? 24. Is 24 of gvreenhappy.com is brought to you by. Ovali. Ovali TV hosts and produces live video events built to meet your objective. Visit Ovali TV to request a free 30-minute consultation today and find out more about going live with your brand. Okay, so every week I highlight something that I love that's G-free and uh, either a product or a service. And this week, since I have Jane, by the way, Jane has been a guest of my show uh, back in January too. So I think I highlighted it back then, but hello, you need to get Paleo Desserts. It's actually on Amazon.com and I have the website right here, Paleo Desserts Cookbook. She has such beautiful pictures, but not only that, um, hold on, I'm going to show you a couple pictures on the camera here. Look at this. Does that not look wonderful? I mean, that's a carrot cake and the pudding I've tried. I'm still a little shy on the baking, but she has cakes, she has cookies, she has pudding, she has chocolate sauce, she has chocolate covered strawberries, she has granola bars, but uh, show another one. Hold on, I'll get another picture. She's got a million in here. Uh, here's some smoothies and some cupcakes. Oh goodness, look at that lemon stuff. Mm. And I've tried some smoothies too, but she not only gives you all the recipes for paleo, G-free, and lots of uh, sugar, it's a lot of uh, low sugar recipes, but she gives guides of all about the nuts, um, how you shop for stuff, how you stock your pantry. And then at the back, she's got metric conversions and resources, you know, because some of these things are new to me, these ingredients. She explains everything. So it's like a paleo Bible too, besides just the dessert um, recipe book. So I recommend paleo desserts and you buy it at Amazon is the quickest. I mean, it came to me within a few days. Um, maybe Jane wants to, at the end of the show, say where else she, you can buy it. I assume right here on paleodesserts.com too. But right now, let's get our guest on. Jane, because she has so much information, I don't want to wait another minute. Let's get Jane on and talk to her. Look at how fancy her set is too. Thank you so much, Jane, for for being a guest two times now on G Free and Happy. It's a delight to be here, Kathy. It's such a, so much fun to work with you because you you're so interested, you're so curious and Gosh, you just get me going and I start talking, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I um, I can't get enough of you and your information because you're so calming too, but also if I just say, hey, what's this? You'll just have this like beautiful spiel of exactly what I wanted to hear. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, um, 
Let's see. I I have had a number of careers. My first career was a chef, a pastry chef, and then I I became a real estate agent, and then I went to MBA school, and I became a chief financial officer of a chain of bakeries, Rudy's Bakery, and then. I became a, a network, computer network expert, and then I became an opera singer and I sang for about 10 years in Europe. And then I became a jewelry designer then, but each one of these changes was punctuated by a health crisis. Sort of like my body trying time after time to ask me to listen. And so the last, after the jewelry designing, then I became a health practitioner studying <laughs> jewelry, jewelry to a health practitioner. I know they seem illogical and then uh, and, and now I'm a writer. So but the point is that every life change and sometimes these were also relationship changes or moving and every change was 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 brought 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 up by a health crisis. And at one point I had total adrenal failure, chronic fatigue, two frozen shoulders, I could not move my arms, and cancer all in one, one year. And that was when I was a jewelry designer and I finally decided I'm really going to have to do something about this or I'm going to die. And so I began studying uh, like, like a, you know, studying like, like nobody's business. Uh, my my bedroom was was a library. Uh, <laughs> I, I know uh, that we all seem yeah. to want to know more about why we're not feeling well. What is it? And so I began to piece it together for myself. So I I gave up gluten a long long time ago. But then I began to um, give up dairy, and I felt even better. And then I gave up genetically modified foods, and that was a huge improvement. And um, the last thing I gave up, well, of course, I gave up coffee along the way, and I gave up sugar. But anyway, these incremental changes is what I want to talk to you about, because if it was one thing, I wish it were one thing that would fix everything, but we may be gluten intolerant, but there are lots of other ways to be healthy. So all these incremental changes have, have changed my life, and uh, I noticed along the pathway that there are millions of other people that have reactions similar to mine and I was inspired to share my story to people that are on the same path so that anyone can benefit. Well, it's and I follow some of this too because I'm uh, doing those same things that you said. Maybe not, I mean, drastically unhealthy, you know, the, the cancer and all that, unfortunately for you, but you healed yourself. Um, but I am going through those things where I'm switching almost monthly on something or changing up or getting rid of something in my diet. And each month I keep feeling better and better. And that's why I have guests like you because you're helping me you're making me feel better and um, I need a cheerleader so hello Jane <laughs> hello we make a good team yeah I think so let's talk about um, it's Memorial Day weekend and it's time to travel the summertime we all I get scared when I have to go anywhere um, because I don't want to eat out all the time. It's expensive. I don't know it cross contamination, what's in everything. So it's nice if we can do kind of a budget friendly travel tips and healthy for you and G free and paleo. And so let's talk about some of this travel because you have a blog actually on janeshealthykitchen.com all about this. And that's what got me started. So tell us about this traveling tips. Uh, tell us about the traveling tips that you have for us. We'll just start with one item and go through them. Well, um, Kathy, I've prepared for you a Memorial Day emergency travel. <laughs> I love so it. So say you're going away, say you're traveling across country, or maybe you're just going, um, maybe you're driving, or maybe you're just going on a picnic. But maybe you, you, you could be the only person that's on a gluten-free diet. And when yeah. we travel, Hello. we're ex especially vulnerable to falling back into old habits. And uh, we need to be kind to ourselves, and we need to prepare a little bit. So when I travel, I always bring my own food, and I prepared this little picnic basket, or picnic 
menu for you. And what we have is uh, just very quickly to go through them, and then I'll and I'll talk okay. about it. We have a salmon salad that's free of mayonnaise. We have a guacamole that has the seed in it, so it won't turn brown. We have the celery seeds, or I'm sorry, celery sticks for the guacamole because on the paleo diet, crackers are a little tricky. Not impossible, but tricky. We have some low sugar fruit that can be eaten in, in case of uh, emergency hunger pangs. Then I have crunchy nuts. I love crunchy food, so these are special nuts I prepared. And then, of course, as you know, I have a terrible sweet tooth, and so that's why I wrote the Paleo Desserts book. So I have here my blueberry superfood crumble bars, and these are um, on my blog, janeshealthykitchen.com. And we're showing a picture of them close up right now. Gorgeous. Okay. We have a crust that's made with the, with uh, chia seeds, no eggs, so they're vegan, and coconut and almond meal, and then the filling is avocado and blueberries. You know, that's the thing with you. That's the first thing I noticed with you when I had you on my, as a guest and I got your book was that, a lo and it seems to be a trend now too, but a lot of your desserts have vegetables in it, like avocado and stuff. So. Well, let's use those fresh fruits and vegetables that 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 are so good for us instead of the refined ingredients. So um, I've got this uh, wrapped up bar. I keep them frozen and I just stick one in my purse for emergencies. And then of course, if you're traveling, uh, you, can, you can take your blender with you and you can make a smoothie in the morning. You can't take a smoothie on the plane, but you can take it in a car or you could bring your smoothie ingredients and you could borrow your, your, your friend's blender and make a delicious breakfast. So I'm going to make a smoothie for you. Uh, so uh, tell uh, me, though, really funny. I love this little thing about you, a little uh, Jane uh, thing about you, is that you take your big blender everywhere with you. <laughs> That's funny. And I take it in my carry-on wherever I go. I even, I travel a lot, and I, I, I get stopped a bit by TSA, but um, I have my breakfast. Because if you're traveling, you're very vulnerable, and you go down in the hotel and you look at the breakfast there, and it's all, uh, for me, uh, gluten and sugar are poisons. So I don't want to do that. So I, I leave the room uh, completely satisfied and breakfasted. <laughs> Where do you have the blender? I mean, do you put it in your hotel room? I mean, do you go into... Uh, oh, I put it in the bathroom. Okay, all right. Well, then good I have tip. My, my, my celery and carrots and... Uh, apples and and grapefruit and things that don't really require refrigeration for a day or so and, I, and my powders and I can make very nice smoothie for a couple of days. Um, so I want to ask you real fast because the first show we had with you we talked about the paleo diet. Can you give us and we have a graphic of the paleo diet as you go through it really fast too. Very interesting. A lot of people ask me what's the paleo diet? Well of course it's inspired by our Paleolithic ancestors who lived from 2 million years ago until 10,000 years ago. At that point something very important happened in human history and that was we began to use agriculture and we began to eat grains and bread and we began to raise animals and have, have milk. So some people are saying, and there is a lot of truth in this, that if we go back to the diet that we are genetically designed to eat, we'll be healthier. And certainly there is no doubt if we give up the refined foods and the foods that are old and dead, then old we'll be and old dead, dead. gross. <laughs> no, but if you think about it, you go down the grocery shelves, if you really asked yourself, well, now I'm looking at this item, but it always came from an animal or a plant. True. How old is it? Ew. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's freshly picked, it's full of vital energy. And the older it gets and the more it's processed and the more it's heated or this and that, then it may lose nutrition. So, of course, the healthiest way to eat is to pull it right out of the ground and eat it. Uh, I love that. <laughs> um, actually, a couple of our, our um, viewers tonight, uh, you know, they, they have uh, avocados and things in their backyard, which picking would be great. I think we have, what are those huckleberries? We have huckleberries in our backyard. Delicious. Yeah. Um, so, 
But if you want me, I'll go through what's in yeah. the paleo. Yeah. Let's go through each one of your things. Okay, so if you have that little chart in front of you, yes. on the left side, what is in the paleo diet? Well, vegetables, tart fruits, nuts, wild meats, eggs, coconut, and olive oil. Now that sounds limited, but think of all the millions of kinds of vegetables and fruits that exist. Nuts and seeds, hundreds of a variety. So it, it really means this, these are all the most basic foods on earth. Now look at the right side. What is not in the paleo diet? <laughs> well, just about just everything. <laughs> well, if you go down the aisles of the grocery store, most things, except for the vegetables and, and, and the meat, none of it's paleo. So what's not in the paleo diet is refined foods, sugars, sweet fruits. Because, you see, the fruits that we find now in the grocery stores have been bred for hundreds and thousands of years to be sweet, which we find so appealing and they sell better and we love them, but they're, they're, they are, uh, the fructose, the natural sugar in fruit, causes a rise in blood sugar and a destabilization of the metabolism. So they are not, sweet fruits are not allowed in the paleo diet. Wow. Grains are not in the paleo diet, nor are genetically modified foods. Extracted seed oils, such as sunflower seed, canola, sun, sunflower oil, canola oil, and safflower oil, that sort of thing. And dairy, of course, is not in the paleo diet because it we didn't use dairy until 10,000 years ago when we began to actually have, um, uh, we, we stopped the hunt and gather diet and we began to have domesticated animals. Uh, we have uh, a question. Um, in fact, yeah. I asked you this last time because I wondered this. Why, why no legumes? Well, um, because the, the theory is that legumes are part of a cultivated, um, cultivated foods. Mm -hmm. So they are cultivated and they are part of the, our agricultural tradition. Now there probably were a few legumes that we hunted and gathered back in those days, but we didn't make uh, a, a huge diet of it. I, I am I, a big uh, fan of those too so that would be one tough one I could do the other stuff but that one is a tough one you know I think the answer for everyone is we have to use these diets as a guide and then listen to our own bodies and see what they say and then you might be part paleo and part something else but then you find the diet that works for you nicely said Jane <laughs> so let's go let's do the salmon salad first okay. uh, so for your fun um, treat on the go Okay, so everything here is designed that I, so that I can actually make it in less than a half an hour and get everything put in my suitcase and, and get on the road. So let's say you have a salmon filet in the freezer or, or in your refrigerator or, or a breast of chicken or whatever. You can steam it. That I looks steam so good. This okay. much water in a shallow pan covered on the stove takes about four minutes. Then I, while it's steaming, I chop. I chopped up parsley, a little cucumber, a little celery, which I happen to have. Added olive oil, lemon, salt and pepper. That's it. You don't need mayo. You don't want mayo when it's not being refrigerated, and it tastes absolutely delicious. And I've and never I, heard of, um, you know, back when all of us were doing picnics as kids, um, everything, mayo was in everything, every salad, every, every, so I like what you've done without the men. Hey, I want some of that. You're, you're eating that without all of it. <laughs> that looks good. And then we have the guacamole. And this is made really, I had an avocado, so I just, I mashed it. I added some cilantro that needed to be used up anyway, lemon juice from the same lemon or lime you can, you can use, salt and pepper, that's all there is. Put the seed on top so it won't turn brown. I like that's your containers great. too. They're great. And these are BPA free containers so they're not leaking toxic plastics in, into, your, into your system. So then we have the celery sticks, those are simple enough. And then we have the fruits. Do you want to talk about the fruits? Yes, I yeah. do, because I've had to really research this lately. So go ahead, and there's a graphic, too, on this one. So in my research, I have found, and in my body, I noticed that when I get a sugar rush, I feel bad. 
and I feel sort of like someone has pulled a veil over me and it may take me a couple of hours to come out of a little bit of a funk. Now there are many kinds of sugar rushes and fructose is a type of sugar that doesn't give you as big a rush as say table sugar but it still gives you a rush and in my research I've noticed that humans should not eat more than 20 grams of fructose per day because it's very challenging for the liver to digest fructose. Um, more than 20 grams a day, which is just a few tablespoons, goes, it creates fat deposits in the liver and creates insulin resistance and a propensity toward obesity, diabetes, metabolic syndrome. And since we do have an epidemic of that in our country, I make sure my recipes uh, address that. So when you drink a, uh, a glass of fruit juice, in one eight ounce glass of fruit juice, there's more than 20 grams of fructose. So it turns out that fruit juice is not as good for you as real fruit. So name so, a couple uh, well, fruits that, um, well, you have two right there, but name a couple more. Oh, well, blueberries. Oh, yeah. Gooseberries, lemons, limes. Um, there aren't too many, actually. You really have to be uh, uh, Granny Smith apples. Other apples, I can't do. They're too sweet. Bananas, I'm sorry. Now, I'm not telling you not to eat bananas. I'm just saying you <laughs> do what you need to do for your health. But as you become inspired to be healthy, you may remember what Jane said. And you may wake up one morning and say, you know what? I get it. I Now I feel it in my body. I know what she was talking about. And I'm actually ready to make this change. And I'm not going to eat bananas, except for maybe once a month. Because well, without <laughs> incremental changes. So well, and it's well, funny you funny. said that, too, because my guest last week was all about no sugar, detoxing, all that good stuff. And she told some very uh, interesting facts about the sugar, but she talked about the banana, too. So I've only had a half a banana in my smoothie, and eventually I'll cut down a little more. But that little bit of banana really does taste good in the smoothie. So I, I still haven't gotten rid of that. So I don't blame people. I mean, my husband has a banana a day in you his lunch. You have to have compassion for yourself. Yeah. But um, we, I'm telling you what, what works for me and the majority of people, and then you have to make choices for yourself because it's free. Nice yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay, keep now, going. The nuts. Now tell us about the nuts because I didn't. My daughter knows all about the nuts, but yeah, I do I not. So go ahead. <laughs> Jane, you're Jane. not sharing with us. But I'm a sucker for going through the airport and buying snack foods. But if you look at the ingredients, it will it will scare you because. The nuts that you buy are, they're not, may, they may not be raised properly, they're coated with things, and they're not soaked. Now let's talk about soaking nuts. Mother Nature is very, very smart, and she has created nuts and seeds with a bitter coating that is indigestible on the outside. And that is so that when animals, humans, animals eat them, the seed goes right straight through the digestion. And <laughs> Go ahead and say it. You know what? <laughs> Perfect growing <laughs> environment. And the plant's job, one job in its entire life, is to grow. And so... We're going to have plants growing in us at some point. Well, um, these... As you know, you notice when you eat nuts, there's a little bitter taste for a moment until you get to the inside. Well, these anti-nutrients, they're compounds, natural compounds that cannot be digested, cause inflammation in the gut. And this is widely known, but gluten is an anti-nutrient. Anti There's some specific names, some of them are called lectins, and gluten is a lectin. But there are other plants that have lectins as well. There's another type of anti-nutrient called saponins that nightshade vegetables have are very high in saponins. So they create fissures or little indentations, perforations in the gut. We don't need that because 
we're struggling for help. So what is the solution? The solution is well, you can either you can skip the nuts, which I would not want to do, or what, what you can do is soak them. And if you soak them for seven to 20 hours, it softens and dissolves those coatings on the nuts and seeds. So the seed goes, oh, 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 you, you mean I get to grow? You mean I get to do what I'm supposed to do? And it becomes incredibly nutritious. Then you drain it and toast it. And then it is at the height of its nutritional content and it becomes crispy and and it's and there's no no trace of bitterness on it and it does not harm your digestion in any way. Now a lot of times we can eat nuts that are unsoaked and sometimes I do in emergencies. You can't do this all the time, but I'm just telling you, if you get into the habit, if you feel like taking this step in your own health, you can buy your nuts raw in the bulk section of the store or buy them online, bring them home, soak them overnight, drain them, toast them, or you can dehydrate dehydrate them if you have a dehydrator, and it really takes no little, no time at all. I always keep jars of every kinds of nuts on hand, and I have my snacks. And I just took a little from each jar, and I have my snack pack here. But That's a good you idea. Have, you don't have to do this, but it's one of those little incremental things that has really helped. How long health. do you um, roast those for? Um, well, it depends on the temperature. Okay. If you roast them at uh, say a hundred or hundred and five degrees, it takes about eight hours. Okay. And so you can leave the the oven on the minimum minimum temperature and go to work. Well, and uh, I should say all of these things that she's discussing, I'll put um, and the page with my video tomorrow, but also uh, she has all these links and uh, Jen has them for Twitter, so maybe she could tweet a couple of the links out. Um, we are, of course, going to uh, need to go faster now. Um, so tell us about your berry yumminess. So um, this is, oh, this is a, a, a one of the recipes that I'm experimenting with for my breakfast book. I'm so excited because I have a contract for a new book. Woohoo! Fritz book is doing very, very well, but uh, next, uh, so I have until October to finish the manuscript. And you so do I'm all these recipes, you test them every day. Every day, I do a recipe a day. They're all completely original, but and about 90% of them are your comfort foods that we know what they are. We know this is a berry crumble bar, but it's not a normal berry crumble bar. It's actually a lot healthier, and it tastes absolutely delicious. And then, of course, I freeze them, and I, I just then I could just throw it in my purse. I saw uh, an update on your Facebook or a uh, Twitter, uh, a tweet that said lose weight and eat desserts. So this is also, you know, well, count. See, you see, a f wheat flour is very high in carbs. Sugar is a hundred percent carbs. So, and dairy, of course. Well, I guess dairy has nothing to do with carbs. But if you if you eliminate the wheat and the sugar from the dessert, what's left? Well, coconut, which is very low in carbs, and the sugar, the sweetener that I recommend is a chicory root sweetener, which is has zero net carbs. So that means that the desserts that I that I offer in the book are extremely low in carbs. Hello. And I, I ate them for a year and a half and I didn't gain one pound. Hello again. That is really good information because um, a lot of people gain weight eating a lot of desserts and you have to think about all those carbs that you're ingesting here. But having vegetables in your your dessert disguised to make it feel like comfort food too, give me another slice. The point is that Wheat flour is very high in carbs, but gluten-free flours like tapioca, potato flour, all of these gluten-free flours are completely loaded with carbs, but I'm oh, not allowed. Uh, so in paleo, there are no grains whatsoever, so I'm using coconut, shredded coconut that's just ground in your food processor if you have one. Then um, this is very, very low in carbs. So by definition, grain-free desserts are very low in carbs. Um, where uh, we've been asked again, what is the sweetener you use? Can you say it again? Yes, the, I'm using a variety of sweeteners in the breakfast book, but in the desserts book, I use primarily a chicory root sweetener. It's a natural sweetener that has zero carbs, 
and zero calories. That's called Just Like Sugar Tabletop. And it's I wrote a lot about it on the website. It's on Amazon, Amazon too. Yes, uh, the best place to get it is in, at vitacost.com. Okay. I believe they have the best price at the moment. And you uh, mentioned that, yes. It's yes. expensive, but then again, uh, I know that I have friends that have diabetes and they spend $20,000 a year treating their diabetes. And um, Good point. so I don't mind spending a couple hundred dollars a year on sweetener. Nicely what? said. All right, now let's go into those yummy smoothies that, that you do. Okay, so I'd like to show you a and smoothie. I love your, your uh, blender, too. I want that blender. Oh, this is a portable blender. There are lots of different types of portable blenders, but this is one that you can put in your carry-on, and it doesn't cost very much. I think this is called the Tribest, but any, blend, any small blender will work. The main thing is I want to show you that you can bring your food and you can blend your breakfast and you don't have to you don't have to eat the pancakes or or the sugary donuts that that are offered to you so what are we what are we going to do what wouldn't it be Let's fun if an airport had like a little you know how they have um different stations for um batterying up your your computers but have yeah. a little blender station they should i know i, I think so too yeah. So I'm going to make a, you, a, you a smoothie really quick. This is um, this is coconut water, but you can use regular filtered water. You can use any kind of alternative milk. Now I'm going to add um, a, a little piece of slivered ginger, a handful of spinach leaves. See these leaves here? Then I have a strawberry that I've cut into quarters. Whoops, there a little piece and here we go then I have a half an apple cut into pieces that goes in there and I have a few slices of lemon or lime it gives it a nice tart flavor and now I'm going to put a scoop of my favorite green powder in that's there. green yeah <laughs> and I'm going to put a scoop of my favorite protein powder in oh boy and then I'm going to put in just a little sprinkle of stevia. Now this is not stevia that you buy in the store. That's refined. And this is unrefined stevia. Refined stevia is not paleo. And it's actually refined with chemicals that you wouldn't want in your body. But this <laughs> is ground stevia leaf. And it's green. It has a bit of an aftertaste, but as you can see, I didn't use very much. So let's see. How does this blender work? Say a prayer. Okay, okay, here we go. Oh, oh, wait a minute. This is, the blender top is here. This is a sweet blender, and you just screw it on like this. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah. I want that blender. Okay, you ready? That's it. Breakfast is served. Right there right. in your cup. And you can take that, you know, you could do it right before you leave for work or going out to the picnic or whatever you are visiting, whatever you're doing, you could take that cup with you, right? Yes, this is a travel cup and it has a lid that you could you could put this on, you could put this right in your purse. That is so, so cool. is, Just don't take it on the plane because they'll take this away from you. But, um, <laughs> but I, I bring my smoothie ingredients when I travel. So I'm going to take a taste. Okay. Okay. Wow. It's tart. It's very nutritious. Um, it's, it's just loaded with goodness. My mouth's I watering. Taste, I taste sweetness from the apple. There's a little sweetness from the coconut water. Hmm. But I taste tartness from the lemon, and the ginger gives a little zing. I and this is, this is not a super blender. And I have a little, little tastes of strawberry in there so it's delicious absolutely delicious so refreshing wouldn't it be wouldn't fun it? if we had like an audience you know the virtual audience where we can have a taste of that because that looks good it's very good 
Well, Jane, you have, every time, every time I talk to you, you amaze me with all of the knowledge that's in that head of yours. Uh, thank you so much. And well, thanks for sharing all of these wonderful tips for traveling, uh, especially in Memorial Day weekend, all of the fun that we all do uh, when we're G-free or have some kind of allergies. So Just remember one thing, that when you're inspired to listen to your own body, and to improve your health. You just take one step at a time. That's nicely <laughs> said. And where can we find you? Well, my blog is at janeshealthykitchen.com. It's, it's at the bottom there. You can find me at paleodesserts.com. Um, or you can find me on Facebook, Jane's Healthy Kitchen, Paleo Desserts on Facebook. And you're on Twitter at J Healthy Kitchen? Yes, J Healthy Kitchen, or Paleo Desserts with a Z. Oh, I don't oh. know that one. Okay, so J what's that one again? Uh, it's paleo desserts with a Z at the end. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Um, but if, you go uh, my, if you go to Jane's Healthy Kitchen. Dot com, all those links are there. Um, so uh, everybody check out. She's got a ton of recipes, a ton of pictures, a lot of tips. Go to Jane's Healthy Kitchen. Dot com. So uh, I'm having her back because I love Jane. Um, so. <laughs> Until the next time, Jane, have a great Memorial Day weekend, and thank you. you. And you keep up the good work. Thank you. That's nice. Uh, so um, please check out this book of hers. Hold on. As I drop things. Uh, the Paleo Desserts. It's got a lot of great read, too, of all the things you need for a paleo di diet, basically, if you want to have any sweet treats. Um, next week, I finally have my two guests that uh, I had to cancel because Monday fell on a uh, on that tragic Boston um, bombing. So we have the guests from that night who Rebecca run Rebecca and uh, Jeffrey Laura. They'll be on next week. We're talking social media media, community, connection, all that fun stuff. And until then, have a happy G-Free Memorial Day weekend. This is Kathy with gfreeandhappy.com.